Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearances video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another one here. This one based on one of your newer suggestions. And this one I picked because it heavily relates to one of my most popular past videos. This one having to do with a mysterious man that suddenly appeared, uh, became a great curiosity, and then seemingly disappeared thereafter. It's a very, very popular video. It has a lot of views, lots of great comments on it. Two, I'll post a link for it below. I'm talking about that man of Tared, the man from Tared that, that a lot of you have seen in the past. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, please check on the link below, and then that way you'll see how it relates to this new suggestion here. Sure enough, we have another entry, this one involving another man who was a mysterious person, came from an unusual location, just seemed to appear out of thin air, and then when that happened, uh, he became another curious curiosity and then seemingly disappeared thereafter. He goes by one distinct name known as Jofar Vorin, although he also is apparently known as Joseph Vorin. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with this mysterious man, whoever this was, and his appearance uh, back in the mid-1850s. So who was this Joseph Vorin? Well, again, he was someone that just seemingly appeared out of thin air in 1850, to be specific. Um, he was found in a small town near what is now Frankfurt, Germany, although apparently it also goes by several other names um, as far as that location. But for all intents and purposes, that seems to be the main area that, it, that he, in turn, was found. And it just seemed like out of the blue, he was just there. Just all of a sudden, people happened to be there uh, with him, and they saw... What a curious person this was. The reason why he was so curious was the fact that he spoke German, but it was a very distinct, very broken form of German. I guess it would be like the closest of someone mimicking the language, but not necessarily getting everything correctly, probably just maybe 50% there. And of course, that stood out to, to, to the people that were there too. So when they saw him, and they got the you know more info about him the more that they learned the more mysterious he became because the stuff that he was providing was just way out there this is stuff that nobody has ever heard of but he was telling it in an absolute concrete manner as if he knew where this stuff was and he himself was wondering why no one else was getting it. By the way, all of this is chronicled in a very interesting book in 1852, chronicled in this case two years after his appearance by a guy named John Timms, known as the book as the Yearbook of Facts in Science and Art, and in it that's when he described a lot of the information associated with this mysterious man with this Joseph Vorn, and so a lot of this actually comes directly from him. But yes, let's go ahead and let's point out all the stuff, all the curiosities that this Joseph Vorn uh, stated. So again, he spoke broken English or imperfect English, and when he was presented with other forms of European languages, he did not understand them. So anything else as far as any other languages there in Europe, they were not, according to him, recognized. Instead, he presented various forms of other languages, and he called them differently. For example, he stated that he, he, he read and then he writes something along the lines of a language called Laxarian, and then another language called Abramium. And who knows, I guess, what those eventually became in, the, in, in our version of our world with regards to those, those, those languages, but that's what he called them. And then also, uh, with regards to it, he stated that that Laxaria is the most common language of his own people. And it seemed like just by pure happen chance, the way he spoke it, it just happened to somewhat relate to the German language there. As far as his physical appearance, it didn't seem like there was not much difference. I was trying to see if maybe he was like dressed in a completely different, just out of this world attire, or if maybe he had fashion in terms of like the face, the hairstyle, anything like that where it just stood completely different from there but no there was no notes of relating to this so for all intents and purposes it did seem like he was just dressed in a regular manner uh, commiserate to that period there but again the more info presented the more mysterious they got like for example when he was questioned about the religion that he in turn practiced the way he described it was in form and doctrine more than the lines of christianity 
and that his religion he himself was a Christian but he called it a different version he called it in his location is Patian so that was very, very interesting to find out and also uh, he was stating that the, this Luxaria the main place the country that he's from and the language that he speaks from there is someplace there in that location of Europe but hundreds of miles from it so if they were to pinpoint starting from that place where he's at now and then try to pinpoint where Luxaria is then it would be hundreds of miles away from their current location where they were interrogating him and also that there was various oceans separating from it by the way another interesting thing about those oceans when he just started describing in fact the the main uh, parts of the earth where he comes from and he called them compartments I guess that's the closest thing he was relating to countries here's how he stated apparently there's five great compartments on his own earth he calls them Sacria, Aflar, Astar, Oslar and then Euplar so they definitely have a rhyming factor to them five in this case compartments which leads to the idea again that yes that that there's five countries within that earth and then Loxaria just seems to be a big location within one of those uh, particular compartments as they as he called it or countries as well and then when he was asked well how did he get here I mean how on earth at least even on his earth did he manage to come by that location there in Germany uh, well the way he stated it was he was traveling he was trying to find a long-lost brother he made it seem like he was on a ship that was crossing one of those many uh, large in that case uh, of, of places of sea that he was coming across but he must have been involved in some kind of big storm something like that because eventually it involved a shipwreck what he was on wrecked and when that happened he doesn't know exactly how or where he came to but when he did so that's when he woke up in that location there basically that's where uh, where the whole story started with regards to uh, this this gentleman um, and, and where he was found and so presumably and I'm just piecing the pieces together maybe there's a chance that you know how you have like the infamous for Muta Triangle and the idea that there's these maybe portals or some kind of interdimensions that seem to open up throughout there in the sea maybe who knows in his location when he was out there trying to find his brother from pointing to 1b across one of those vast oceans and he did so he came across a storm and within that storm was one of those portals or something along those lines it wrecked his ship but he woke up here in our world much to his curiosity and then our curiosity and that's where the tale moved forward at that point but yes that's if you ever wanted to find out like essentially how he came across Apparently that's how he did it. And when he when they pointed to him to a map, you know, try to trace his route, try to find out exactly where in the entire map of the world he would have come from or where um, he could show them at least the parts that he was talking about he claims that he was not able to do so because uh, I guess what his location was was completely different uh, from from anything discerning our map I mean it just boggles the mind it just broadens it to hold over there imagine where he was from in this case involving continents just completely different in shape and size than anything that we have here so very very interesting stuff when I was reading all all of this info and then finally um, it, he was someone that again attracted a lot of attention there in that location he was moved eventually to Berlin he was dispatched there and he continued to be shown around by others within that area I guess there's something along the lines of, of of a tour I guess you could call it where he was uh, traded around the capital to other people who were interested in hearing more about him and then seeing what he could present in terms of information but for all the stuff that he told and then all the questions he was asked and then everyone there um, basically um, you, know, from, you know trying to find out more to this day they were not able to discern nothing in terms of who he was his name, of course, was Joseph Warren, or in other places, Jofar Warren. But that's it. That's pretty much all the info they could come about for him, um, uh, from him. And then it seems like even then, uh, you know, landing there in Frankfurt, Germany, originally, and then going to Berlin, it seems like after that time period, he must have disappeared because there's nothing else I could find afterward in terms of his whereabouts. Like, uh, like there was nothing else in terms of the usual stuff I was looking for. Like maybe he lived someplace else and then just ended up 
dying there or maybe he settled into another life elsewhere maybe even in other parts of Europe but no it does seem like uh, the tale ends right there so just like again for the man from Torrid this guy appeared and then became a curiosity and then disappeared thereafter unless if someone knows more info about this Joseph Warren that I might have missed in terms of his final uh, locations then please post those comments it'd be great if you could update that for everyone here but that's pretty much it that's all the info associated with this mysterious man this this Joseph Warren um, it'd be fascinating to see if in this case what's that almost 150 170 plus years in this case of his first entrance if there's anything that's ever coming to come across afterwards showcasing more tie-ins to those mysterious languages the religion that he was mentioned and then also the those compartments or those continents that he was also mentioning as well all of it again tying in to him and in some ways um, in this case uh, having a language with this broken German language uh, being the only link as to uh, as to him having some similarity from his world to ours. Now, as far as theories as who he was, there are the usual ones. He could just a just be a hundred percent a hoax, just someone that was playing tricks to everyone there. It's obviously not out of the uh, realm of possibilities when you have something like that, because all you have to do is just make names up, make a language up, and then try to see how far you can get with that prank I could totally imagine people even doing that too this very day just to see how far something can go in the loosest sense viral uh, with this matter then there's the other chance that you're dealing with someone that is just not quite right there in the head maybe like a schizophrenic or someone that's just simply just have some kind of mental disorder and then that's why he was able to spew all of this stuff that nobody was able to understand and then of course C the final thing theories that yes indeed he is someone from another dimension an interdimensional traveler much again from the supposed man of Torrid that came from another place and then like my theory at least how he came across in this case from a shipwreck in the sea tied to some kind of portal how fun would that be if it was that theory instead because it opens up the, the realm of possibilities of what's truly out there um, and, and I think I may even have another video if I recall correctly about a guy who disappeared in the field and the theory is that he went into another portal there too so could these portals just open up randomly and if so could they bring more people here or even us to them? That's just always up uh, for, for debate as well. So, But again, if anybody has any more info, anything I might have missed about this man, this Joseph Warren, please post those comments below. That would be really, really great to hear. So, All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.